this body. <laughs> Can we do a formal roll call? Yes. Um, oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm like, where am I? Um, okay. Uh, committee member, um, oh, Krepke. Here. Committee member Alvarez is absent. Chair Rogers. I'm here. Um, we have two out of three. I yes. think that's good enough. We are good to go. Uh, so does anybody have any announcements other than how much they enjoyed watching the Cowboys beat down the Giants? I did enjoy awesome. watching the Raiders beat the Broncos. <laughs> None? None? Okay. We'll move on then. We have July 31st minutes. Do you have any additions? Nope. Any changes? Let's go to public comment. Any public comments on the agenda or on the uh, minutes? Cool. We'll show those adopted as presented. Let's go to public comment for non-agenda items. We have any comments? Any online? Nobody online. Okay, we'll go to item five point one. All right. Good morning. Um, so this first item is um, in response to some of the uh, burglaries that have happened, um, particularly recently with our cannabis businesses. Um, and so we discussed that as a subcommittee last month. Um, how the city can help. <coughs> Um, partner with the industry that we have made great strides in supporting through our ordinance developments and program elements and we wanted to respond with working with the community and um, setting up a workshop to help them um, self-empower on how they can harden up their facilities and work with the city to um, prevent or avoid um, uh, security issues and so um, I want to bring up uh, Monet she colleague she's been working with our police department and also the cannabis community um, Monet is um, dedicated to our cannabis program through grant funds from the state so she works on the cannabis program support 100% of the time um, and so uh, she has been um, the one directly involved with working with the, the businesses and the police department to set up the workshop morning so i will start about our plans so we have reserved the ufo room on october 3rd there is no cancelment in that day on tuesday from five to seven we will have two people from our police department <coughs> kyle and dan that will have also a presentation i have prepared agenda and nick is providing some additional attendees who, who would like to speak in this meeting so the agenda is not completed yet because we might add more names to it but as soon as i have all the people who want to participate and provide like a comments, I will create a website and they will send the emails out to all the participants, who, whoever has interest in joining this workshop. So we have agenda. I can let give you a brief who was going to talk about. So first part, we will have a police department providing tr data about the uh, trends and information, regional context and express collaboration with other retail theft issues. And the second part, we will have best size security design and techniques. We have representative from two dispensaries who will give like a information about the like, best designs or practices that will be like a successful. Which uh, which two? Oh uh, Eli Melrode from Soulful and Brandon Levin from Mercy Willis. Okay. Okay. And then the third part we will have a threat assessment training, how to evaluate your location. We will have Clayton Taylor and Ron Ipema, my friends, Ipema, senior security analysis and then specialist. And then we will have a tabling event mixture and we will have someone from uh, intelligent security camera design. There might be more people attending, but as soon as I have all the names and lists, the agenda will be finalized and the website will be created. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Not about that. Are we also going to talk about other options that we had thrown on the table last month, like around potentially helping out with the finances of security? Mm -hmm. I think it will be it will be definitely part of the conversation naturally, um, because one of the one of the focuses of the workshop is just to understand sort of what the issue is and what they can do within their own program, because security is part of the ordinance. They're supposed to have certain elements of security. There's a lot of different ways to implement those uh, the security, and there's a big difference in price tag. So one of, the, one of the strategies of the workshop is really to talk about 
instead of just jumping to the 24-hour security guard, which is the most expensive strategy, what else can they do from the very beginning, things that, that are tried and, and, and tested that have worked that are less expensive that might already fit within their means? Um, it's just a matter of education, shopping around, and trying some things out. Um, for those things that are cost prohibitive for businesses, I think that's going to be a, a follow-up workshop type of conversation about what are the what what is actually needed, how expensive are those things, and have they tried those lower cost items first? So that that is the strategy of the workshop. It's not just to jump to how can we fund the most expensive option. Right. Um, I'd like us to do it in parallel because uh, we're talking about this in the economic Devel development committee not in the public safety committee uh, because we wanted to develop resources to continue to support the industry so i think it's great for us to do this workshop and to get on the same page but specifically what we wanted to talk about in the economic development was what can we do to try to develop tools to give to them to either incentivize or require or do whatever because my assumption is uh, yes safety is in the ordinance but my assumption is that people are still meeting that criteria right now and yet still having some additional problems so I'm, I'm looking for the yes and right i think the the workshop will be really good to get people on the same page hopefully it takes care of the low-hanging fruit and i don't want to wait another six months for us to start developing tools if we identify that we need additional tools there yeah, i think it's note taken and that's Part of what uh, Monet does is she's looking at how to support the, the industry. And yeah, this is just one of the elements where they cool. need support. Yeah. So I got that. You're good. Okay. Let's see if there's any public comment. Uh, if you're attending via Zoom and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. There are no hands raised. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. And can we make sure that the Invite to that is circulated to council members who might want to attend and listen in also. Cool. Thank you. All right, let's go on to 5.2. Okay, <clears throat> give me just a second. Huh. There you go. Okay. Well, so um, this one is our economic development strat plan. Um, I uh, just want to start by saying that um, we're looking for very specific feedback at this point um, on what we're going through because from today's meeting, I need to start writing the actual plan because um, we're on a very tight timeline. And so the more specific you can be, the better. I've heard things like, it's too broad, it's too specific, it's too um, big, it's too short. Too hot, too cold. Right. And I'm like, what does that mean? And where would you like more? Not from you guys, but I'm just yeah. saying general feedback has been um, very high level um, and not um, actionable for me at this point. Um, so as I'm going through this uh, presentation, Feel free to stop me to dig in at any oh, moment. You will. <laughs> yes, you will. I get deep and know that I am hard to insult. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, just a quick reminder um, the vision uh, statement for this plan is that of the one that you guys created, um, and um, the mission is uh, yours as well. Um, last time when we um, met, um, we talked very briefly about input and engagement. I want to go actually a little bit deeper into what people are saying, and, and we touched on this last time because the thing that's interesting is that what we heard um, in 2016 we were doing the housing action plan is not dissimilar to what we heard in 2017, 2018 when we did, um, and the we was myself, um, Ethan Brown from Economic Development Board and um, Peter Rumber or Ananda from the Chamber when we did a series of um, extensive interviews with our major employers and some of our small employers. Again, interestingly, not that different from then. Um, 2021, we did a survey um, similar to 
so many of the other jurisdictions in our area and you know i'm sure across the world um you know we looked at what we were doing um there are many plans that were started that sort of had that um equity overlay their economic development strap plans but with this equity lens because of what we were dealing with in 2021 2022. Um, so we have a lot of those plans, a lot of input from them, from those not totally dissimilar to what we're hearing yet again, both through in um, specific uh, outreach engagement um, that I'm doing, that I'm hearing um, from the community, from feedback generally, and also um, we're fortunate to sort of be um, running in tandem with the general plan update. And there, there is an economic development element in this um, and so much information that is relevant to how we um, how we engage with this. Um, so, uh, you know, what I really need to know, given the tight timeline, specific to um, some of our engagement things, is um, whether or not we're still missing some critical information or input, um, and whether or not that would be done through like a survey. Um, is any of the feedback or input we're receiving, you know, particularly different than what you guys are hearing? Because I think you guys are the ones who are every day, all day out there hearing and listening and um, taking the feedback. Um, and then lastly, if I'm missing something, is it something that is survey worthy? I think I said that. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, so that that's um, what we're going to uh, go into a little bit more here. Um, all right, so um, I touched on this a little bit, but didn't give you the details last time. We had um, just taking from a bunch of different places, focus groups that we did, um, uh, again, one-on-one -on -one engagement stuff. Um, we had some a lot of information that kind of we put into either opportunities and strengths or challenges, threats, and weaknesses. Um, some of the things that I will call out are um, Again, ongoing streamlining process uh, processes and increased access increased access to information continues to rise to the top of what people want. Um, helping people find what they need, and sometimes even if we create policies as which we've done, um, are they equitable? Are they ac accessible? Are they kept up over time? Um, uh, but we have a good opportunity there and that we're continually iterating, like once we started, we're continuing to do it. Um, the other thing is um, kind of going um, hand in hand with that is having some clarity. Economic development is very small, but most of the calls we get are for other departments. So like understanding what is our role, where do we um, fit in, how is this the conduit? But what we're seeing too, and having a lot of conversations with um, other partner organizations is, as well as internally throughout the city is, you know, the seamless point of entry. So we have a big opportunity to sort of be a little bit clearer on um, what the resources are, interconnectivity within the site and I th or within the city. And I think um, some of the website stuff that we're doing hopefully will help with this. Um, another thing I just want to um, call out on in terms of a strength of um, the division itself is that um, and the city is that arts and culture is, um, is within economic development. We hear this. Um, surprisingly, it's starting to, to pitch up again. Is we need um, more things to attract young people, and and this inclusion of arts and culture in our um, division is is really helpful. So long as we can um, are able to continue to maintain the interconnectivity between um, cultural arts, arts, public arts, and um, economic development. Um, and then the other thing that we're hearing then now before. <laughs> forever, I feel like, is, um, you know, we were so successful in rebuilding after 2017. There was a real, Chris Corsi, Supervisor Corsi says it was like a unicorn time. We touched the unicorn when this, um, this feeling of um, creativity, innovation, collaboration, internal, uh, within the organization, external um, from us, that we have the model that we need to continue pursuing that because we know we, the city's done it, we know we can keep doing it. Um, in terms of challenges, this comes up a lot. Um, we uh, economic development, in particular, is understaffed and under resourced. But that they're talking about us, but that goes across the the city in so many departments. Um, for us, in specific to this, it's myself and um, Raphael. Um, it is. Uh, it, 
this sort of leads to some of the perceptions and it's difficult to get information. Um, you know, if I'm writing this, I'm not answering emails, I'm not taking calls. Um, Raphael is doing that, a lot of those things, but he's not doing this. So um, it continues to be a challenge that affects the perception and I, I know we're not alone. So I don't wanna say that we're alone on this. Um, I think the challenge um, on that is the increased collaboration across the board and again, looking at the, at the opportunities around that. Um, uh, lacking tools of, uh, uh, and incentives. You know, this is again specific to um, business, business attraction and retention. Um, you sort of touched on, on it just now with cannabis. Um, how um, how open is the city? The perception is we're not that open to looking at, at creative um, uh, incentives. It becomes, a, it's an area of opportunity for us, but it's a perceived challenge right now. Um, the... Um, uh, so oh, yeah, so going back again, the perceived inefficiencies and slow processes, um, you know, they understand that there is a difference. There's, um, interestingly, we're still hearing that people aren't really blaming staff, they're blaming processes. And so that's helpful. Um, <laughs> but it gives us an area of opportunity, which we actually are currently working on and is in um, the proposed plan. Housing and affordability. Um, remains a big issue for us because this is where there, we're seeing tension around um, a, 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 um, a limit. The, it limits our growth for workforce attraction, um, and thus limits also our growth for business expansion. Um, we. Um, did a, a number of um, engagement things. We did in 2021, we had focus groups. And in 2023, um, we uh, have been, like I said, participating in the general plan update. Um, this, some of the information that in the next couple of slides is repetitive to both efforts, um, as well as uh, the engagement activity, one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions and tabling that I've been doing. Um, in the last month. And basically, again, it's a reiteration of a lack of affordable housing, high cost of living is the limiting factor in attraction and development of businesses and workforce. Costs are high for businesses, but also for employees. Um, and then again, um, I was at a tabling event, I want to say two weeks ago, and uh, I, it was just the group of people who must have walked by. <laughs> I was at Montgomery Village and it was, they talked a lot about the need for downtown entertainment, living options, um, the attraction of young professionals. Um, so again, lots of repetition in com uh, coming up through this. Uh, also, there was an interesting thing for, you know, the need for inclusive approach to economic development. Um, this is an equity theme that has come through a lot. Again, it, you know, if we're looking at our 2021 um, surveys, at, given where we were, um, the civil unrest and COVID and the clear disparities between how people were faring, um, that equity and inclusion um, piece of it goes throughout it. Um, so in some of the I, I will say this, the first bullet point under that, the perceived shift from traditional um, economic development approaches to community building and resiliency is really a sign of the times. But it was interesting how it's, con it's showing up in different ways in current conversations as well. So there's still damage or like emotional damage, I guess, I don't know what, from like what we went through, which is so easy to forget because we're so done with it, but the damage is still there. And You're talking so, like the big box wars? Yes, um, I'm talking about a number of things. I'm talking about the fact that we still, like just after 20, you know, the fires, as we did with COVID, um, as we did with civil unrest, there's an, there's an equity issue in terms of who's faring okay in the sh shocks and stressors that we deal with every day within the city. <clears throat> and then on top of that, you're looking at other, um, so, the, so the natural shift from us to focus focus on um, what do we, it, our, our previous plan was really focused on small businesses, uh, business attraction. You'll see um, we have some data from our market study 
that shows you know the the, the biggest number of uh, of employers are those with under 10 employees right um, where we get our attractive historically and then it's showing up again in the data like the 2021 market study is it's you know we're not going to get google we know that um, but we get um, we get offshoots of these things um, and so it's showing up and how how we sort of shifted away dealt with community resiliency are we going back? And then there is this kind of um, tug between um, we need a Walmart, we don't. I mean, that's cheap money. That That's never been said, but that big box thing yeah. versus you know, retail, what easy money versus the hard money, and where are we investing in those things? Um, so um, in our 2021 survey that we did, we had a really good response rate. Um, we um, sent it out um, and through this laborious process to all of our, uh, uh, the emails that we have for the uh, business tax certificate holders in the city. And so I think for that reason, we had a very good response. Um, a slight majority of them were actually business owners. So the information to us is really valuable in terms of how they were viewing um, what, um, what we were asking. Um, interestingly, most of the service I look at, mostly the women participate, men got to start stepping up a little bit more. Um, again, mostly, mostly uh, BIPOC uh, population is, is underrepresented, which we see that fairly consistently. Um, so in from those surveys, and again, I, I, we're seeing some similarities in, in the other surveys that went out through um, other uh, divisions and departments. Um, the most important issue for the future of Santa Rosa was identified um, both business owners and residents prioritized um, housing and affordability, but um, for uh, obviously because it's top of their mind, business owners really want business development, uh, whereas non-business um, owners, their top concern at that time was um, equity and inclusion. Um, the challenges and barriers to engagement, and we asked this in a couple of different ways. This is um, like with just the division as well as, you know, in perceptions with the city. I'm just looking at this one in terms of city wide, but it's not totally dissimilar um, that they find. Uh, uh, so one of the things that we found out is the bulk of people, like 90 percent of the people come through the doors at room three, which is where planning, building and engineering really sit. Um, they're newbies. Um, they need something that has, they've never asked for before um, and they don't know how to operate. And then businesses are somewhat the same. There are very few times where they feel like they need to, like the general things you can figure out how to get a business tax certificate, but when they have an issue, they want to change, it's a building permit, it becomes difficult. And so the city processes for them are difficult to navigate. Again, that is not something that has changed, particularly through the years that we've been doing this survey that comes up consistently. Um, unsure what city resources are available. This is particularly relevant when we have a big issue, um, like a, a big shock like COVID. Um, as a um, county, uh, because we were stretched thin, the information was coming fast and furious, similar, a little bit similar to um, with the fires. We consolidated some of the information and used the Economic Development Board as the key resource, um, but it's not something that's a, a viable solution ongoing. Uh, we need to figure out how to be clearer how to better understand what the needs are and resources are that people are looking for at any given time and be more responsive on our website. And then um, city processes, so time, cost, and certainty, always. Um, city processes are time consuming. We hear that a lot um, from our businesses. Um, and when the calls are for us or the emails are for us, a lot of times it's like, can you help us? Where is this? We're not getting a response. Where are we in, in the process? Um, the economic development issue areas of most importance to business owners. So again, we split, we were able to split this data out. The number one thing, first and foremost, is business assistance. You know, other came in um, soon after that, and the kinds of things that were in the other category, public safety, homelessness, small business support, um, infrastructure, uh, environmental wildfire planning. So again, there's, um, there's, Given what's happened since 2017 to today, we are constantly, it, for businesses, it's a constant onslaught of having to deal with um, things that I don't think were um, 
yeah, I don't know. It just seems so out of the nor ordinary for so long now, but it is now the new norm. Um, you know, uh, uh, non-business owners, they're really, um, you know, business assistants did come up, but they're really most interested in what it is to live here. So again, from that workforce development standpoint, um, they're looking for something a little bit different. Um, the general plan uh, uh, update survey, the, there were a series of them, and I just took a snapshot from their summary and just wanted, I was the one who highlighted the things in green. Um, again, continuing, it's, it's housing for all, it's, um, enriching community public service amenities, it's promoting jobs and economic growth. Um, again, very similar survey results in all the things that we're um, seeing through the various departments putting them out. Um, new jobs and economic opportunity um, of uh, ranked high in those surveys as well. Um, in 2022, um, the general plans, I, I just wanted to capture some of these things because, again, it's been an ongoing process of really diverse, different kinds of um, input. Um, and uh, this slide just is a, a summary of the things so you can see. Um, again, we're seeing equity pop up. We're seeing um, uh, the uh, cost and certainty for development businesses is just many slides of the same thing saying we know. <laughs> um, okay, so um, in terms of the survey that we put out, because last time we spoke, we said, do, should we do a new survey? So I wanna let you know what we surveyed last time and based on not just that 2020 survey, um, but all the other things in the ongoing current input um, that we're doing, are you seeing anything um, that we're missing um, that you want to have included? Um, and is the survey the right way or um, should we do something more targeted? And I'm gonna say this and then shut up for a hot second, um, which is you don't have to answer that now because we can go through how we're placing this and then see if with that additional information, there's something you want. So who's the audience? For the updated survey? Is it just broad throughout the community? So, um, yeah, the, the 2021 survey, for the updated survey for that the updated. we do now, yeah. I, I would probably do two things, like we, just like we did last time, is one is just make it broadly available um, and then ask um, Lon's group to, to promote the heck out of it. Um, but where we got very few responses at that for, with that, I went through and literally did the same email in groups of 20 to the entire list of our business tax certificates. It's phenomenally time consuming, but it gave us the best survey results. And we've used, um, we've pined our applicants, you know, who, whether they're applying for sign permits or business permits or whatnot, we've pined our database for the last three years. And actually I've had really good results using that list. Um, that's more recent than just the general blast. The general blast tends to get residents. Yeah. They have time, they, they're locked in. It's the business uh, businesses and the applicants that are really hard to get to. You have to go to them in the way that they are used to going to. And so yeah. that, in terms of a blast, these are the, the lists that we have that have been effective but there's other means we can go to focus group meetings. Those are more time intensive, but and you only get that group, but it could be both. Yeah, and I will say that uh, last time, as we usually do, we partnered with the various um, community organizations, all the chambers have mm -hmm. put it in their newsletters, et cetera. So we would still do those things. Those are just common actions that we do. Yeah, and the reason that I ask is, uh, I've always been curious about this question, and, and you might remember, we use this a lot actually during redistricting where we were asking people, what do you consider to be your neighborhood, right? right. Like that helped inform where district lines should go. I think that a similarly interesting question in a survey would be an open-ended question that just asks, what's missing from your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. And then if we could capture which neighborhood they came from, we could start to look kind of how we had talked about being a little bit more strategic in how we went, you know, went after a grocery store downtown right. or, you know, went after entertainment in Coffee Park or whatever have you. If you had kind of that open, we, we focus on downtown a lot yeah. for a good reason. And I think it'd be really interesting to see what the responses would be across the community if you just asked them that open-ended question. Do you think, um, so there's two thoughts that I have is one, um, 
a similar or like maybe it's a kin to that question was asked for the general plan update. So we do have some information. I think pulling from that is appropriate. Pulling from that. So I will pull from that. But I really like this idea as we get into more detail, because at this point, the market study and some of the other data is showing, look, you need to. And, and actually, and this is how it really strongly inform the general plan update. Um, is that neighborhood centric growth right but i would you be okay if that's a question as we start getting into some of the tactics of these that we can then focus in on sort of neighborhoods like i think it's super helpful and it'll be super helpful um like does it have to happen before this plan is written or can that be part of a plan to do a st study no and i actually think that that could be an action item that comes from the the plan but I think if there's that level of intention of, you know, if we've got this 15 minute city concept that we're actually trying to implement through our general plan, how does that actually filter that out down then to the perception that somebody has of their own neighborhood and what's missing? Yeah. Um, like, do I have to get in a car to drive someplace because I think that there's no grocery store close, right? Uh, or is there an ability to kind of work through that and, and, and provide more of a kind of complete feel with how we're doing the general plan design and integrating the economic side of it. I, I'd just be really curious to see what people's perceptions are yes. and, and how we can tailor incentives specifically to each kind of pocket and what they're missing. Right, just in terms of the, the business assistance yeah. tools, right. like coupling that with, okay, well, how are we supporting those interests if we're not? Right. We're not going to get them, right? right. So we have to actually be proactive to go get them. I love that, and I loved it. I love it especially as an action because I will mm -hmm. tell you, in the past month, the the conversations I'm having in um, like through the Latina service providers in Roseland are so different right. <laughs> than the Rincon Valley ones. One, but two, um, I had the good fortune of being assigned in um, uh, interim. Uh, Deputy Director of the Community Engagement just after, you know, during George Floyd, just after. And those conversations are the ones that still live with me today in terms of I want to walk outside of my house, find what I want in my streets and have pride. Right. So those kinds of things, I think um, it'd be super helpful to go in and be very, very specific. Yeah. I mean, even just to use an example of something we were talking about earlier, right? West Ninth got hit with graffiti right. uh, over the weekend, right? And if you did a survey in that general area about how important graffiti abatement is, it's going to be a lot more important than if you did it in Oakmont. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But if you did it as a citywide survey, how important is graffiti abatement? It might hide the fact that there are certain areas that have different needs and desires than other areas of the right. city. And so how do we be more intentional in the economic development side of this to, you might look at it and say, you know, we've got making this up right we got plenty of bars in right. Santa Rosa and when you look at the data there might be a complete area that has nothing where those people are traveling I'm not saying we, we need more bars but I'm using it as an example of like something that you might not know if you just look at the aggregate exactly. and, and to dovetail off that how do we how do we get an equitable equitable response because when you say like graffiti babe it's not important to somebody like an Oakmont right Oakmont historically has a higher participation okay, participation level correct than other areas right so when we're you know when we're trying to get that information that's so specific, how do we not get it drowned out by a large portion of an unaffected community or a community that has a grocery store down the street? And the, the classic example is how is <clears throat> how important is housing, right? right? If you only look at the aggregate data and you don't look into who owns versus who doesn't own and their response, sure. right? You're going to get a completely different response. And age or not age. <clears throat> so again, one of the conversations <clears throat> was just like I was like, did you? set this up because I had a long conversation at one of the tabling events at Montgomery Village with somebody who was like irate at the um, at the uh, you know the the uh, mid-rise housing that's going on on the outskirts because he couldn't get to Target right the next guy who came up was like I am living for twelve hundred dollars in a tiny bedroom with my girlfriend and dog and I want housing and it yeah so I think um, I see a pathway and I love it because we can do it by district but even within districts sub districts within your districts and that's the kind of help um, that we're looking for as we do implementation. We do a precinct level would that be feasible? I mean, probably there's 
two precinct is probably not the right one, but you could do census designated area. And we could figure that out per because again, it's very different per district. I, I mean, even just on a simple level, you could drop points across the city, right? And then assign everybody, you know, whatever one you're closest to, everything mm -hmm. within two miles. I'm making that up, right? That could be a way that you do it too. Yeah. And we've tried to locate or add that locational data or even at age data. It is on the optional list. Yeah. Um, so, and we all, we put it at the end because if you ask up front, you just lost your audience. You're asking too many right. personal questions, like what's this right. thing really about? But especially mm -hmm. the audience we want to get to is the folks that aren't regularly dialed in, ready for your next survey. Yeah. Um, so we do have to be careful, but we, we've gotten better at it and we are starting to collect that data because we, we build the trust with the questions up front, like what do you care about? Um, and then try to get the location or the age data. I mean, I wonder, I, maybe this is way too far in the weeds, but I wonder if one way to fix that is at the end of the survey, you have a map that you just say, click on the general area you live in, mm -hmm. right? You're not giving an actual address. You're not having to type anything else. Psychologically, you're just like, I'm over there. Yeah, we had people in the general plan of thing. We had them uh, basically define, like click on a map, like uh, define your neighborhood. Cause that, that, and that helped us inform those, those nodes. So maybe we can couple with yeah, this. Yeah, find your, find your neighborhood, like circle your neighborhood, and then that way you know. And pull yeah. the data based on. on We're not asking specific like zip code address questions, which is kind of what we did with the redistricting, which was right really yeah. effective. I think zip codes are very difficult. But the other thing that we're aware of and that I'm trying to build into the plan is um, leveraging. So you know, again. Um, it, it, sometimes it's like when people say, well, you, you know, you're one person, right? So I'm like, yes, but I'm in a department that's also doing this. And guess what? Transit is going out and doing this. So we're trying to be able to be of service and leveraging these other things. And I think in that way, we're going to get also interesting, specific information. Um, so we'll, you'll see that um, when we're going through. So from a survey question thing, I want to move on. Keep it in your mind. But I love this idea of involving surveys because one of the things that we have in there is actually a feedback loop um, in the thing. So um, something that's common in all economic development, or well, most strat plans, not all, I've been looking at a ton, is um, landscape and data. Um, you know, this is just stuff that I pulled easily, um, so I don't want to spend a lot of time here. Um, but, um, you know, we have a lot of basic da data at our um, at, uh, accessible to us right now. Um, the market study data that we have is, is again, from 2021. We have no funds right now to do a market study. We could probably do one in, in, in the next couple of years. I will say, I would not have guessed our median age was 40. Oh. I would have guessed it was higher. Yes. And I'm telling you, I was like, 40 is pretty good. Because yeah. the last time I did it, we were like so bookended but it's not great. And so, you know, I, I some it, it's helpful to have this information because like the information that comes through is like, we're doing this and you're not doing this. And I'm like, understand our landscape. And so I am going to build this part out of it. You know, unemployment rates are very low. They've been historically very low. It yeah. means that we just don't have a workforce that can feel like, you know, to fill our jobs. What's, um, the, what's the source? Uh, this one is the um, state, it's the GoBiz, um, I didn't put the data source on this, but it's the um, uh, Governor's Office of Business, um, and they have the um, GIS Esri, uh, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm blanking on the names of the common. All good. In the future, we'll, let's just put the source. Yes, I'll put the source on there. Um, What's the time? I did it yesterday. No, no, or, no. this is like current or yes. this yeah. data. Yeah, like I literally, that is a live data source. Um, so yes, this is current. Um, the other thing that is, um, that comes up a lot, like I think at one point I said, you know, our, our, um, we're stagnant in our growth. Um, and if you talk to some folks, like, you know, I think, uh, operations like you know that's great because we can't you know we can't afford to service yeah, the infrastructure people. i'm like but guess what you can't afford to service more people until you get the revenue from those people so this is round robin thing so there's there's a constant tug within the city on what what we're trying to do um it's what's that um uh, Dr. Seuss book, it's like, you know, growth happens anyway, um, or it doesn't happen. We can help it happen. So um, we currently do not have, um, that I've heard, 
um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's uh, we have juxtaposing ideas on whether growth is good or bad. <laughs> and so uh, any guidance on this, we want the money, um, but we, with the money comes people. Like this, that's the story for the last 25 years. Yeah. Yes, I, right. I will, I will say that's why it's much easier to focus on downtown is because then at least you're getting a better rate of return on the infrastructure investments that you're making than if you sprawl, right? That's right. So just, I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go. Well, go. just that's why the general plan, we're trying to bust out of just downtown, sort of the... It's there, and then everything else is something else. No, we're trying to do these walkable nodes. Correct. So yeah. that is the emphasis of the general plan for the next 30 years. That's that's the premise. And so we want to build all of our policies through that lens so that yep. they're not downtown. There's something else, but they're not the suburban sprawl model that left unattended is, is, is not going to have the efficiencies and also the targeted approaches to actually build those up so that <laughs> downtown, but they're walkable, they're fun, they have what they need. Yeah. And this you want to build Sebastopol, you don't want to build Freestone. Right. Or There's no, nothing wrong with Freestone. <laughs> right. All beautiful communities that serve you want to our build, Santa Rosa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, next, there right. you go. Right. But I mean, <laughs> and I, I think that the, the thing is, too, is, um, you know, is understanding when you're looking at those, the um, the fiscal impact is less because your service is consolidated. Mm -hmm. That said, we cannot control the free market. I mean, <laughs> so except we can influence. Right? We can we, influence we promote, it. We can be proactive right. about attraction and, and streamline in those locations. And and so that's what we're trying to dovetail across the organization, across our. And place. I think what's not a question is. It is a it is a policy priority, a political priority for the state for us to address this affordable housing crisis. And so understanding that, right, not just here in Santa Rosa, but statewide, understanding that our arena numbers are real. Right. We have to prepare for growth. That's correct. And that's the value of these plans. It is not the attitude of all. Mm -hmm. So, okay, knowing that, I think you guys probably it's, it's have a pendulum. It swings back and forth yeah. on how much people will tolerate. And in the political <laughs> realm, you probably know that more than anybody, but sometimes you're like, why are you doing this? I'm like, one, it's a state law, or two, you know, because we have to. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, not to deviate too much, but that's my favorite question to ask people is, what do you think our growth should be based on? And it all boils down to, it doesn't matter what your answer is, there's a lot of great answers right. at the end of the day. You're told. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. My other favorite thing, just as what is um, sitting in these public spaces, and you know they need to, da da da, and they need to, and I was like, oh, do you have a degree? And, no, but you know, and I'm like, just to be clear, the they is us. <laughs> so like, you can give us these we things. Them. Yeah, <laughs> we are them. Um, but I love it. I love that community um, engagement. So um, again, here on this, more data, just basic. I'm going to flesh this down. Um, you know, knowing our labor market will affect the type of businesses, like when we're starting to talk about this uh, attraction kind of things um, the, uh, and expansion types of things. So knowing our labor market, for example, is going to affect the type of businesses we want to go after, that, that we can attract, that um, we can retain. Um, and then just quick note. Um, you know, always and forever, we say this, um, you know, less than 10 employees is where we, we get our, is our sweet spot. When we're talking to um, people who are interested in coming in, it's usually um, uh, owners uh, with a lifestyle change that they're bringing their um, small business and they have grown. We have worked with some that have grown um, and then it starts to get into infrastructure issues. So um, from our market study, um, in general, uh, we have a diverse economy. Um, our strengths, as you probably know, are in healthcare, retail, trade, manufacturing, um, and tourism related activities. Um, you know, I think most of you, none of this is, is going to be um, a surprise. You know, healthcare and retail trade is uh, where we are. Um, uh, we often talk about in economic development what is a um, What's the word I'm looking for? What what are um, head of household incomes? Um, you know, healthcare. There's a huge disparity <laughs> in what it is, and they were some of our largest, um, uh, like in terms of labor 
um, interest in our ex expedited minimum wage. Um, same with retail, same with, um, with uh, tourism. Those are uh, some of our major employers. Um, so where we're really looking at and where we see the most opportunity based on both the um, uh, what our landscape is, um, what um, some of our business interests are, um, and what our market um, data is showing us is advanced tech, you know, R&D manufacturing type of things. But even within that, we need to start looking um, deeper into what that looks like. And then in that, we need to start understanding, uh, dive deeper into some of the infrastructure needs. Um, we have issues around um, education and workforce pipeline. Um, and our major competition, we are not seeing like Petal, it's like the Cotati grade or something like this. They don't go over it. Petaluma still has a link over to San Francisco, you know, obviously Southern uh, mm -hmm. Sonoma County, Marin. Um, we have, we're a tertiary market in this area um, and again, have some of the, um, some of the workforce growth um, issues that we need to deal with. So two questions real quick. Yeah. Um, in terms of accommodation, how many, uh, if I recall correctly, in the Tubbs fire, we lost 25% of our hotel rooms. Is that roughly accurate? Yeah, we rebuilt and were slightly above oh, where we were. Okay, that was my question. And then second, um, advanced tech R&D and manufacturing takes land. Correct, thank you. So Ask. <laughs> so um, <laughs> do we have that land? And then to, uh, secondary to that, are there opportunities, the areas that do have land, it would be the county within our sphere of influence and urban growth boundary, are there, what are the prospects for us to be able to try to attract some of these businesses using county land that would then, if they were to build, be annexed into on a, on a lot basis right. into the city? Don't tell the county that's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm just. I mean, but I think, <laughs> I think that they've, they, you know, I think we've all heard the sort of rumors or threats or whatever around this. If you don't do this, we're going to do this right mm -hmm. in the county land. I will say in the county land, our biggest competitor is the airport area. Um, they have land, they have willing um, uh, landlords and landholders. They have some infrastructure issues. Okay? <clears throat> so, um, yes, on the south side, we have active interest in um, industrial. We have some, or manufacturing that type of industrial land uses and we have some um what's the word uh why i just can't think of simple word today um <laughs> uh, connections or like relationships with people who have connections to places that might come up um we have a lot of foundational work we need to do to be able to prepare so we can be looking at some of these things and a lot of them are in that southwest area mm -hmm. um so i want to say about <clears throat> six months ago um, i was talking a lot to somebody out of um taiwan who was looking to um open a second plant here. You know, we identified a location. We've got tiger salamander issues. We've got some other um, uh, other issues. They were a, interestingly slightly less concerned about being able to pull um, the workforce. They felt that they could do that. Um, but there are so many issues. We might have land. It's either not currently zoned, which some of it is being addressed with the general plan update. And the specific plan. And the specific the plan. Um, uh, or um, it's outside of our jurisdiction when, within a fear of influence. And there is still benefit um, to us taking a regional approach. So again, right now it's um, Ethan um, uh, Peter Rumble and I are really looking at, so we have a brokers meeting, industrial brokers meeting coming up um, to try to uh, better assess this. Um, I asked Jill about um, software uh, that we can understand without going through like Keegan and Copen, <laughs> what our inventory looks like. So there's that answer. And then another subset of it is, is it looks very different for different things, right? So sometimes for manufacturing, you need a lot of land. Um, what are we looking at? What kind of new technology, new industry are we looking at that is actually <coughs> a smaller footprint? And um, we have not yet adequately studied that. So uh, my follow-up question to that is, in looking at this walkable future, when we're trying to attract these large organizations to come here, that I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say it's going to be a thousand plus employees. But let's say it's, you know, 100 to 249 employees mm -hmm. or, or somewhere in that area. Um, and then we talk about affordable housing, where that affordable housing lies, where housing period lies. 
Is there anything we're doing within um, the general plan update to be flexible about being able to say like, hey, we're going to buy, you know, these whatever seven, whatever size acreage, and we're going to build a facility to work in. And then at the same time, we want to use half of that lot to build workforce housing so they can, with mixed use, so they can just walk to work. Yes. So one of the things that um, the economic development team has been really active on with the advanced planning team is trying to claw back some of our historic industrial lands, because then you get this sort of um, merger of things that are non-noxious that have been historically live work kind of thing. So Maxwell Court is a very good example, and we asked for that. I'm curious as to why it's a funny one, but um, but I think I know. But um, that kind of example, we, we know that that maker mixed use kind of thing works, that there is a stated desire for it, and that again, there's when people think about R and D or other kinds of things, it's it can be compatible specifically with new technology types of things, and that's sort of where our interest lies. Yeah, I'm just talking from like a. I mean, if you want to use a you know kind of classic Americana example, if you look at like Pittsburgh in the '60s and '70s, right. where you had the steel mill before all the economic issues that they went through, but right. you had a steel mill down the river, and everybody lived up the hill and. At 8 a.m. every morning, you know, people came out of their houses and just walked down to the mill to go to work. Yes. That's, you know, and yeah. that's the kind of opportunity I would like, when you maybe not steal, but <laughs> opportunity I'd like for us to, to, you know, to be able to attract and somebody. To be fair, because the flip side of that coin is at the time, property, property taxes were di designed in a way where they were exorbitant. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do anything with your land and you were able to take deductions based on improvements that you made or preservation that you did for parks or whatever have you. So there's an incentive for folks not to, to grab land and sit on it for a long time, which people have a much bigger incentive to do in California than other places. But I hear you. But no, but I'm, I'm not saying necessarily go that route. But, yeah. you know, if somebody says like, hey, I'm bringing 400 employees, I need a place for them to live. I, I'm just saying I, not all I'm just saying we've got $200,000. Some of the land that right. would be good for those sorts of things. People are just sitting on. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what I'm. Gotcha. Yeah. I think there are a couple of mechanisms that are worth exploring in the strat plan, and that is is um, we have the maker mix use, which is a new designation for the city. We are we we only tested it out with Maxwell Court. It hasn't taken off in Maxwell Court for you know different reasons. We are need to look at what other of these nodes might play out more productively for it. Um, there's also opportunities like innovation districts where you really are, it's not just the city saying, no, it's permissive, but it's a little bit, it's a more proactive, um, assertive approach to connect the dots between partnerships because we aren't landowners in Southwest. Mm -hmm. We're not even in jurisdictional boundaries yet, but start to plant the seeds for potential innovation districts where we can partner with, and you mentioned attract. It There may be opportunities with retention and expansion with companies that are doing well that know the benefit that already know the benefit of working in Santa Rosa and then in in both of those opportunities or avenues just being conscious of that housing industrial mix we're protective of our industrial lands because you don't get to get that back people don't rezone to industrial they rezone to housing um, so being sensitive to that and so what types of industrial land uses can we support and that we can play our strengths to right with water and um, and the permissiveness that we can yeah have. I like I like the um, the innovation district that concept um, it kind of uh, what are they doing for brag um, it's not great blue is it a blue district blue so during COVID they were hit really really hard because they're up almost literally on an island up there and there I think it's it's um, a, they've are in the process of developing and I could be completely inaccurate on this, but they're in the process of developing an idea to attract ocean-based research and development and um, uh, economic drivers on that because that's what they have a large amount of access to. Right. And so I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for us that makes our area slightly unique to to attract those kinds of 
to yes. create something like that. Yeah. So two things. One, so the land use thing. So we're in service. Everything is in service to the general plan, right? Mm -hmm. So land use would be dedicated on that one. But those are the kinds of things that we, we've got a section that we're looking at, um, creative incentives. And so um, what I'm hearing from this, and I think is um, an easier thing to bite through, <laughs> um, is uh, one, we can look at them because, again, every neighborhood or, or area is going to have sort of slightly different um, uh, infrastructure, meaning like land availability, um, zoning, da da da, whatever, um, you know, access to water, whatever it might be. Um, so we um, we can add those. Those are the things that we'll we'll, we'll sort of uh, flesh out within the tactics of the plan. Um, and I think not only can they be targeted to neighborhood. Um, I th I'm hoping there's a tolerance where um, where we can uh, prioritize areas and industries. Um, uh, because if we're looking at temporary incentives and we um, seek to do those, um, they're easier in more specific areas. And we have to be aware, um, one of the issues obviously that we're facing is um, our general fund is not in the best of shape. Any incentive that might have that fiscal impact um, is generally not uh, what less well received, shall we say? So yeah, those kinds of things. It, and I'd like the focus to stay on like what do we need to do, right? Not like what can we afford to do. That that's the second half of the conversation because we do, you know, in our reserves we do have fully funded reserves and then some. We know that over the course of a couple of years that completely dwindles and disappears. And obviously we wouldn't build a structural budget around it, but if we can create some one-time incentives that actually enhance economic development, I think that that's a good use of that investment. So I, I want us to do what's what's ideal uh, in the planning phase and then figure out the practicality of implementation also. Okay. Are we working with, um, I don't know, I don't know if you've called community partners, but like telecommunication companies, for example, like if we do want to attract advanced tech R&D, they're going to want fiber internet, right? Right. And so, how do we get that those kind of resources out to there? You know. And I know that there, there have been a number of times where we were doing public works projects and partnered with some of the telecom providers okay. so that they that put in kind of. I, Claire probably knows well, better than I do. Might as well just go ahead. And yeah. Put it down, kind of right. The uh, one one trenching. Yeah. Yeah. The, the policy is yeah. Single trench. Yeah. Yeah. Dick wants. It, it, I mean, and that brings up like a side note in some of these areas where we have the most uh, land availability for these types of pieces, we have massive infrastructure gaps. Um, I'm sure all of you know like about some of the, the issues we're having in the Roseland area. Mm -hmm. I mean, even some of the residences don't have um, sewer, right? But we have some industrial areas where that is a, a critical issue for us um, and could be one of those Maxwell courts sort of like um, multi-use kind of spaces. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, you know, what is interesting is we do get a lot of, um, we're on the list for the um, GoBiz, the state um, uh, business recruitment thing. And those businesses that are like 100 employees, they want six, you know, like the typical thing is 60 acres in, uh, and on a rail track. Um, we don't always have those kinds of things, right? Um, or they're like, you know, we've got, um, you know, like toxic waste and we need to be able to bury it. It just is not going to happen here. Um, so, yeah, that, that again speaks to what kind of targeted things and then having a realistic expectation of like um, the, the current, the growth trajectory of business like that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, I think based on, I've been asked a number of times, what's your through line? And equity, sustainability, growth come up. And by growth, I mean we need revenue growth. We need economic growth. Uh, but we want it, I know, uh, based on council um, uh, objectives and the feedback we're getting, including internally with the other departments, is um, you know we have a chance for climate um, action kind of greening type of things, which I think is something is of interest in this area. Um, but we do need to retain um, an overarching understanding of um, equity, and so um, all three of those words mean um, multiple things, um, and so that is sort of the framing that I'm looking at. Um, 
this probably hard to read slide don't worry about it i go into it later but i just want you to know that um that as i'm fleshing this out at the end what i started with was sort of this matrix of what are we doing um and um as we agreed to before it's going to have goals um objectives and tactics um but also uh, this uh, matrix at the um, end needs to have metrics and targets um it's going to have lead um economic development does not do all of this these are things that are done and owned communally um there's high medium low priority we're looking at a five-year plan so we have probably some of the actions are going to be on the earlier side that are currently being done because we've been working on this thing for quite a while um, and then um, also a question of additional resources so i do want to let you know that that is going to be part of it um, probably as a summary um, thing at the end of the just so oh yes really fast where in there is business um recruitment Economic vibrancy. Is it false? Under economic vibrancy. Okay. We should call it out specifically. Yeah, I was going to say, because I see support Santa Rosa businesses, which to me is existing. I think you'll see it in the next slide. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, okay. But no, that's great. We want to make sure we capture definitely the core things. And then back to her earlier point, like, are we, are we reaching out to you broadly? We want to make sure we don't lose sight on the really important core things that we have. The other thing I want to know before we go on to this is timing so our intent is to bring you a draft plan so we're really trying to get december started. right we're going to bring you a draft a rough draft plan at the next meeting yeah raisa told me that by the end of october we'd have it finalized <laughs> great that what did i say that we <laughs> this is what we this is what recorded? we commit to right so we yeah. want to we want to set ourselves up for uh the start yeah. of the next year right and we this is important and so <laughs> this is still topical categories but we will start drilling down into more directional um, objective statements, we're gonna bring that to you at the next meeting. So this is just to make sure, instead of spinning our wheels really broadly, let's, my interest is to narrow it down and be very laser focused so that we can actually get this down and be successful. So um, to that point, what do you need from these gentlemen today to get that. That's what we're getting into. So, that, yeah, and oh, I just wanted okay. to segue that as we start to look at yeah. how broad we can span this, but the broader we do it, the more watered down our focus is. And so I just, that's the lens I want you to look at when we go into these next slides. Yep. And, and what's just, and these next slides, um, uh, they're already changing based on the conversation we just had. Yeah. So um, that's helpful. Um, and when you said I'm sorry to get in the weeds, get in the weeds, because like I said, all the feedback has been yeah. so general. I'm like, yeah. and contradictory. I'm like, <laughs> I need some help. Um, okay, so, um, so uh, you know, when we're looking at these, I tried to make them, I think, the same colors. But anyway, again, goals, the, 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 the main goals are climate, culture, communication, economic, economic vibrancy, and Oops, I forgot to change human capital to it's like community resiliency, but um, it's resiliency and community resilience, uh, resiliency and um, community, whatever I said. Um, so then we can start getting down into objectives and tactics. And again, I want to say these are already changing um, in my mind based on your input, but basically this the climate culture communication is really how how are we to do business how are we doing business um we know um i wanted to make sure that we have some current things that are going to be again foundational to some of the things that we want to be doing um so as an example under improved business climate streamlined services and support which again came up again and again and again one of the first things we're doing <laughs> in the midst of this um, development services strat plan um so other strat plans affect how we do business that's ongoing so we'll have some things that are currently happening and some things that we need to um, uh, to uh, create after that um, we know that we need um, in terms of business satisfaction we don't have an adequate we used to but we do not have an adequate um, feedback loop um, that um, we is actionable and is tied to other things. A lot of it we know is sort of website driven or access to information easily, helping other people help themselves becomes kind of a, an interesting thing. Same thing, client management system. We used to have one, we do not have one. Um, we need to be able to track things as we go through. Communication and marketing, huge um, uh, for us. Again, speaking to the fact that people don't know what our resources are, don't understand how to access them. Um, 
becomes um, something um, we know from you guys directly, but also uh, based on the few um, business visitations that we've been able to do um, post-COVID, um, bringing in um, relevant departments. We know this company is having an issue with this. We'll grab some folks from planning and building, and we'll do a visit. We'd like to do those more on maybe like a quarterly basis, but um, using the economic um, uh, sub development subcommittee uh, and perhaps like it's maybe the chair and the mayor and the city manager so that we can have directed conversations so you guys can see these businesses within the area. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like, but um, but that's another means for um, for feedback loop and understanding emerging issues within industries. Um, we needed a place also to to put the um, the ongoing strong interest in. Um, uh, equitable economic opportunities. These are upstream investment types of things. These may be sort of one-time use funds, but this would rank in that matrix sort of high because we're already um, doing those. But we also need to do, again, some more foundational work like the BIPOC business auditing and, um, and things like that. Um, any questions on this one before I go to the next? So a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, so love seeing the update to information tools, the digital. I'm going to keep harping on the concept of a virtual okay. city, virtual city that this we can go on to. Um, somewhere in there, uh, when we talk about the uh, attraction of businesses, um, like I said, I've been talking with Charlotte and Austin and other places that have been doing economic development well, uh, building in a process where Anybody who reaches out to the city with an inquiry about moving their business, starting a business, whatever have you, gets a personal phone call from a council member, the oh. mayor, somebody, right? Just like a, hey, heard you were interested. Let me tell you about my city if you're interested, kind of a roll out the red carpet. Because mm -hmm. I think that that also goes back to the fostering the community partnership, right? Um, so I really like that idea. Um, and I'll, I'll let you keep going through the rest of them, but got some more granular. With that one, I think would fall, um, I think, oops. Um, or the chair of the Economic Development Committee. You can do you can do whatever, right? Market it however you want towards businesses. Yeah, I think that's really good because um, we did see really, really great response to, um, you know, again, I have to go back pre-COVID, but when we were we were recruiting certain businesses um, and having conversations, even if they didn't land, thank you, COVID. But um, like with some businesses, we did actually have um, either the city manager or actually mostly it was an assistant city manager, but we usually had um, the mayor at the time um, in with us or an available. And that changed so many things yeah. when we were working with some those businesses at the time. And actually some of the developers um, came in. I know, I think I've said it before, for Simon, they still loved it. Um, so if we have that ability um, to do that, we can definitely um, include that. Yeah, and I've told this story and I'll keep telling this story, but you know, my mom started a nonprofit in Santa Rosa 25 years ago, right? And within a year they were outgrowing their building. So a mayor in Runner Park, had a conversation with her, helped partner her with a uh, vacant space, a space that had been vacant, where they got three months free rent for the move. They've been in Runner Park for 25 years since then. And they've outgrown that building and they outgrew the next building. So they're in their third building in Runner Park, but they've never left Runner Park. It's funny enough, they're actually leaving for Santa Rosa now because they can't find a place big enough in Runner Park. Right. But the whole reason that they've been there for 25 years is because the mayor contacted her and said, hey, we've got some vacant space and they're willing to cut a deal for a nonprofit. Do you want to? Right, and so, so many things in there. And I'm gonna move it on to this one, this economic vitality thing, because one, the way we find out is usually not because somebody's called us, like we've right. outgrown our space. Mm -hmm. It's because we're hearing it through the grapevine. Mm -hmm. our, our, um, our beer thing, it's such a tired story now, but um, still one of my faves. Um, it was a side note that I read on something else, right? And then, and then worked with everybody else to get it, right? Um, we usually find out from other people. So one of the key things about our economic um, vibrancy element, um, which is um, actually, I think this is, I think I pulled this from a dated thing because I did have, 
a line that specifically said business attraction retention. So I apologize. I'm looking that this is I pulled from a dated thing. Oh, this, this, this. <laughs> yeah, but support Santa Rosa businesses, I think, was really specifically oh, okay. um, economic. <laughs> it was business attraction <laughs> retention expansion. I'll fix it. Um, but um, but uh, one of the key elements that's going to make us most successful is to have a seamless points of in entry. And it's not just within the city yeah. um, and getting things um, pulled over, but it's also um, working with our community partners. So that is something that um, that we're working on is uh, seamless points of entry. Um, uh, these are just so broad, but here's where under support Santa Rosa businesses, it's the business attraction stuff. So we need um, attraction tools. We're starting to work on some of these things. We've got, um, there's different levels of them. So like for uh, downtown vibrancy, we're looking at um, uh, uh, streamlining some things for, you know, ground floor retail things. We're trying to attract additional yeah. um, uh all sorts of things, both residential and um, and cultural things. Um, we've got our ARPA funded business support programs. Again, um, those are on hold right now, but we um, hope to get those um, start rolling again. Um, those would be a priority. Um, something that is of interest that we have been working with, and we're sort of piloting in the downtown, but we, we were trying um, sort of the business uh, like locational asset tools. So we, we um, tried something called Place Your AI so that when people call and they're like, well, what's my foot traffic here? Where are people coming or going to? Um, gap analysis. We're finding that that didn't work very well. Um, so we're trying to work with our IT folks to be able to get more specific information. Um, but how do you make that um, uh, accessible, readily accessible? Those kinds of things are the ones that are becoming really important to the small mom and pop kind of, I want to invest here. Yeah. And I really like the re-tenanting streamlining. Yes. Exactly to kind of that concept that I mentioned, like mm -hmm. if somebody is not going to get a rate of return on their building, rather than having an empty storefront, if we come up with an incentive program to help put people in there, it's kind of a win-win for for right, community. and I think some of the other things that we talked about earlier, like I'm gonna, uh, I really just love this idea of um, of district targeted um, research will fit somewhere in here. Yeah. Um, I will say too, temp incentive programs come up all the time for when we were doing development. Those things, yes, they some of them um, are continuing to be um, extended. But can we do something similar? It'll fit in with here. Um, also, infrastructure and economic accelerators, those types of things we can look at, um, you know, special districts, um, uh, that type of thing. Um, also studies and reports, just, you know, those fit there too. And then the last one is um, the resiliency and community investment. Um, uh, Public art is part of a program. We have a great strategic plan. We're getting a lot of um, positive feedback on um, that sort of placemaking stuff. Um, the upstream investment um, items work in here. Um, uh, in terms of workforce development, we don't have um, a dedicated staff person in workforce development, but we have invested in um, par our partnerships to this end, and we have new opportunities. So. Um, uh, like partner with the WIB and other community workforce programs. So, for example, if we get the TCC grant, um, a lot of the community organizations that are participating in that would be having an element. So our interest would be in looking to support what they're doing um, and provide um, whatever uh, data information that we can to make those things successful. Um, and then um, phys uh, physical infrastructure improvements that fit here. Um, one of the things that came up during the... Um, exec staff and sort of internal um, meeting was, you know, do we have, um, you know, is there an opportunity for sort of uh, climate and green initiatives? Do those fit here? Where do some of the um, actions and activities of some of our other operational departments fit? And they would fit in with here. So lastly, because I know we're running out of time, is the timeline. Yes, I'm going to start writing tomorrow. <laughs> I'll probably watch this again and start writing, um, but we anticipate by the um, by the next um, meeting. That, again, that 
even if we do another survey, I don't know if we would have time to put those results in, but by October. Yeah, and I think especially if you have the general plan survey results, right. you can pull from that. That's a good starting spot. Yes. Um, you could put into the plan that it's going to be to flush out this more with kind of more targeted a approach, but that in general, these are the concepts we saw from the general plan. That might be a good kind of starting point. Yeah, I think the trend lines are clearly similar, but yeah, where are the nuances for the action yeah. steps? And that will inform the action steps, but I think the trend lines are gonna be similar. Yeah, I also, I don't think we'll see anything that we wouldn't otherwise know. I know Raphael in particular is very plugged in talking to people about what their needs are near their, if their homes. If you work out so. in the ground <laughs> like every day, you're like, Raphael, go find us out. He's like, right. <laughs> So we have 10 minutes left if you're willing to stay um, to, the, to the end here. Just, are we getting this right? Is this starting to look like the plan that you imagined? Is it too broad? Is it too specific? Is it trying to do too much? Um, we're really kind of looking to you to give us that high level feedback and then we'll go right we'll write up the objectives and the tactics based on some of the things that you said or if there's other things that you didn't get to say I'd like to hear those um, no I think it's I think it's great work so far especially incorporating the feedback that we've discussed as a group um, uh, yeah I mean too broad too specific is more uh, personal opinion I think than actual application um, but I think everything that we've covered, everything that is included in these draft concepts, um, yeah, I, I'm, I like it. Yeah. I really like it too. Uh, it's, I said this last time, but it still remains true. It's my favorite thing that we're working on on council right now is this plan. Um, and I think that you are striking a good note between keeping it broad enough to stay relevant for longer while also providing enough specifics to give the overall intent on what we're trying to do. And I'd say the first couple of steps in particular of what we want to accomplish um, to really address uh, the economic needs of the city. Uh, we can't answer in a plan the question about how much growth, how quickly all of that uh, on an economic plan, because some of it's going to be based on luck, quite frankly. the broader economic climate, climate, inflation, things like that. But I think we can set the table for, uh, for, for some significant improvement. Yeah, 100% agree. Thank you, thank you. Um, and if something hits you in the middle of the night or when you're showering in the morning, please, <laughs> details, inf nothing is too deep in the woods. It's all phenomenally helpful. You're good? Yeah. All right. Let's go to uh, public comment on the item. Uh, if you wish to make a public comment and are attending via Zoom, please raise your hand. No hands raised. OK. Uh, only other thing I'll add, and it kind of goes back to the, the care and feeding for businesses, is making sure that we're regularly checking in with businesses. Yes. Um, business uh, monthly roundtable, whatever it is that we need to, to set up. But uh, we should build, kind of like I said, with the, a council member, the mayor, whomever, calling businesses that have interest, let's build institutions that provide pathways for communication. Yeah. And to that point, you know, strengthen our relationship with the chamber. Mm -hmm. yeah. And build that expectation, right? So, right, so when you say, you know, when we see it in the numbers that people don't always know how to access information. Uh, if we've got this consistent monthly meeting check-ins that we're having with businesses and you know, a business owner is talking to the business next to them, and they say, well, why don't you just go to this meeting and ask a question? And that's an entry point, right? Yeah. We say this a lot, community engagement isn't an event, it's uh, <laughs> repeated. Yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's yeah. Um, so on the something struck you at random and bring it up uh, process. Um, and I don't know how this would be built in there and God forbid I bring up any sort of additional employees with Alan in the room. Um, but um, just as a concept, um, I know some agencies have a, um, an either employee or someone that they work with that does an economic analysis of each and every um, item that comes before council. <sighs> Right. Yeah. So like for development, we do that with CEQA where it's like, you know, this has yeah. no effect, blah, blah, blah. I think in terms of tracking metrics or or something like that, 
And this is just, like I said, struck me right now. I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't know how the implementation or the actuality of it would work, whether it would be something we could or could not do uh, or what the cost would be. But any item that comes across, if there could be an economic analysis of it so that, you know, when we're reading our packets and, and, and the items, it says like, hey, this could generate theoretically X amount of revenue for the city or this amount of it attract this amount of employees or something like that. So tweaking the fiscal analysis. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it should be built into the process. Yeah. So I hear you loud and clear and, and we'll have some conversations internally on how we can get you what you need. Yeah. 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 Usually our, our fiscal analysis is as simple how does it affect as the budget. Yeah. It's as simple yeah. as you already budgeted for this. Right. right. And so instead of a fiscal analysis, I think, more, more of an economic, greater economic great. analysis. Yeah. It's the fiscal and economic impact. Yeah. We usually look at them in separate and separation, but they should be considered together. Correct. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. And I think we can work on, we can include that as a action step um, and then through that action process define what um, what measures you want us to report out on you know is it jobs sales tax what, you know because everything is where do you draw the line because obviously that could be sure. a report sure yeah but I'm just thinking you know it's one of those things where you know there's very few things that come before us that are clear cut right and so as, as a tool of you know weighing the positives negatives and the more gray area than positive and negatives, um, having that kind of information, you know, could influence or, or, or educate an individual on their opinion. Right, and the connectivity to the other pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I don't know how you're gonna do it. It's just, like I said, random thought. <laughs> <laughs> when it gets defined, it's easier to do. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> But that's, uh, I think that's yeah. definitely something we can add. But like I know other agencies do, so some of that maybe we could just, you know. Yeah. Maybe no, part of a copy. copy. Yeah. No, and, and quite frankly, this is also the kind of thing that EDB should be helping with. Like that, yes. that's the other part that I think needs to be recognized <clears throat> here is we have an entire economic development board for the county. I don't really know what they're doing to assist us, since that might be helpful for us to better understand. Where are being well, conversations? That you can assist in helping us. Get some clarification on that. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say that um, the relationship is much stronger, and um, Ethan was only just recently fully hired. Yeah. Um, and they are looking at reviewing a number of their elements in their economic. Um, they did a, an update to their strat plan, and one of them is organizational capacity. Um, they are aware of relevancy, and one of the sort of um, tension points that we have with the county, whether it be EDB or Sonoma County Tourism, for example, um, uh, our assessment funds uh, pay for that, is localizing the data. Yeah. It's a constant struggle. Um, and so we get general stuff, um, but uh, both working internally and with them, we should, and I have to say with Visit Santa Rosa, we should be getting able to ask the question, have that information readily available. Yep. And it would definitely help some of the elected to elected conversations. Yep. Yeah. I think, you know, to be honest with you, um, some of those questions, particularly when it comes to Visit Santa Rosa and Sonoma County Tourism, is getting being able to have access to that data given the amount of money that um, supports the organization is something that we at staff level have not been able to um, achieve and it may be um, something at a city manager level. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, uh, do we have any department reports? This. Just this. <laughs> this All right, we can go ahead and adjourn. Thanks, okay. everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>